Hey guys, it's Nena, and today I wanted to talk to you about my top 10 classics list. So this was a video that I made last year, and I made a list of the top 10 classics that I wanted to read or reread. So it's been a while, and I've finally gotten about halfway through my list, so I thought it'd be a good time to talk about the books I've finished, and the rest of my list. Originally when I made the list, I was kind of hoping to read about one classic a month. I mean, I hadn't set any hard and fast rules, but I thought, okay, if I read about one classic a month, I'll finish this in the next year or so. That didn't quite happen, but I have been reading other classics that are not necessarily on my top 10 list. On my list, just not on my top 10 list. Anyway, today I want to talk about the books that are on the list and that I've finished so far, and what I thought of each one. So first up we have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and this is one that I was rereading. I first read it, I want to say, in 8th grade, and then I got on a huge Agatha Christie kick and like read a bunch of her novels, but I wasn't really keeping track at the time, so now I can't remember which ones I have and haven't read. In this book, there are ten people who are summoned to an island, and when they get there, they don't all know each other, and also a strange thing, their host and hostess aren't there. But, you know, they figure they'll wait, they get to know each other, one by one people start to die. So this is really great. I was talking about Agatha Christie, I think, in a wrap-up the other day, and I'm just like, you know what to expect with her, like, it's you get a solid mystery that's entertaining and fun to read. Even though I've read this before, I couldn't guess the ending, so it was like reading it all over again, which is a really fun. I've also read Murder on the Orient Express, which is very good, and there was another one that I wanted to read. Ooh, Death on the Nile, I think it's called. I saw the cover the other day, and it's just so pretty, so I think that might be my next one. Next up on the list was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Basically, it's a look at this young girl as she struggles with mental illness, and this is just really, really good. I had meant to read it, like, a couple years ago or more, but for some reason I put it off and didn't get it, but then finally I read it last year, and I know why it's a classic. I thought it was a really honest and accurate portrayal of what it's like to struggle with mental illness on a daily basis, so definitely read this one if you've been thinking about it. Next up on the list, and this might be my favorite out of the five that I finished, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I mean, look at all of these tabs. So this was one that I'd heard Leslie from Words of a Reader talk about and Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, and I was just like, that sounds great, I need to read it. It's about a young woman who gets married to a widower, and she goes to live on his estate called Manderley. She's really excited to start her life with him, but everywhere she goes in the house, she's haunted by the memories of his first wife. So this is kind of a mystery, suspense novel. Rebecca is just so, so great. I mean, the atmosphere, the way that the novel slowly unfolds, the ending, oh my goodness, I just love this one. I felt like it was perfectly paced, I felt like I got to know the characters, and in particular there's one character, Mrs. Danvers, who like scared the living daylights out of me. I was like, oh, don't let that lady near me! And did I mention the ending? I just thought the ending was like, like perfect. Like, you know when it's like the cherry on top, you were just like, ah, yes! That is exactly right. I've also seen the movie version of this, and I thought it was really good. I think they did a really good job of capturing the atmosphere of the novel, and I got that gothic vibe as I was watching it. So, recommend the book for sure, for sure, and also the movie. The next one on my list is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This was another reread. I believe I read this in high school originally. I remembered bits and pieces, but not you know, every detail, unsurprisingly, since I read it years and years ago. This is the story of Jane Eyre, who grows up in her aunt and uncle's house. Her parents died when she was very young, and her uncle took her in, and then her uncle dies, and her aunt keeps her on, but only because she's honoring her uncle's memory. She does not want Jane, and she does not like her or treat her very well. So Jane has an unhappy childhood, and then she's sent off to school. She becomes a governess. And Jane just really wants to see the world and better herself and improve her station. I think Jane is a great character. I love that she's strong-willed and she has a mind of her own and she's not afraid to stick to her principles. Jane's kind of downtrodden her entire life, but she doesn't let that keep her down. She keeps striving and she keeps trying to improve herself and I just 
think that's a great characteristic to have. As I was rereading this, I really didn't remember a lot of the earlier parts where she was young and when she was in school. I really like the bits when she's a bit older and she knows more of her own mind. Like, that's where it really picked up for me. So, Jane Eyre is a good one. Just read it. And last up, we have the one that I finished most recently, and that's I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. This one I read as part of a buddy read with a few other people on booktube, which was fun. Cassandra lives in a castle in the English countryside with her family, and her family is very poor. And they're also kind of like eccentric, so the story is told from her point of view, and she's writing down in her journal the events that take place, and just kind of documenting her life. And then she calls this capturing, you know, just capturing the moment and putting it down on paper. Overall, I like this one. I will say that I was expecting to like it a lot more, and I definitely liked it, but it wasn't at the level that I thought I would. So that was a little bit sad, but it was still an enjoyable read. I think Cassandra is, is quite witty and charming, and the observations that she makes about her family members definitely had me chuckling from time to time. She is very young in this novel. I believe she's 17 at the beginning, so, you know, there's a bit of that teenage angst where it's like, oh, this thing happened to me, woe is me. Things that as a teenager were the biggest deal, but, you know, later as you grow up, you're like, okay, that wasn't that life-changing, that wasn't that important. I like the cast of characters too, and they all had their own little quirks. This family is struggling to survive, and I was rooting for them. I'm glad I finally read this one. It wasn't my favorite out of the bunch, but I did like it, and I still want to watch the movie. So that's five out of my top ten classics list. And the other five on my list are North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, that will be a reread, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, The Picture of Dorian Gray by... Oscar Wilde. Well, that took me a while, but I got there. And A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I've been thinking about swapping out one of them for a different classic, and that classic is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. And I was thinking of swapping that one for Great Expectations. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, probably I'll end up reading both, but if I had to pick one to get to sooner, which one would you pick? And while I'm asking questions, tell me what's the number one classic that you recommend to anyone? Like, is there any classic that's not on my list that you're like, you need to read that right now? Definitely let me know down in the comments below, or tell me about any classics that you've read and enjoyed recently. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to talk to me elsewhere, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, I'll leave all my links down below, as well as links to all of the books that I had talked about in this video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!